As part of our maintenance of the path into our house, we dig sediment out of the stream and lay it down on the tire tracks. And this spring, I've noticed something interesting. I think I've noticed this before, but never really thought about it much, which is that along the edges of these places where I've put down sediment, the grass, like in the first inch or inch and a half next to the edge, is a lot taller than the grass further out into the walkway. And there's a couple explanations for this. One which we've dismissed is that this is not getting trampled on, whereas this grass is. And why we've dismissed that is, and it's true that we walk either on one of these or straight down the middle here, so there's a rationale for that, but we've dismissed this because um, this grass um, is really like follows the edge of this like almost perfectly and this twists and turns a bit so we wouldn't really follow that with our walking most likely. Um, additionally there's kind of a distinction so there's this tall grass then there's kind of a medium level grass and then there's really trampled stuff from walking and um, running a wheelbarrow across it. And we also have seen this on the edge on the field side of it. It's not so noticeable because the field is a lot more um, variation of grasses and we don't walk on that side at all so it seems to be it isn't walking on it. Um, two other explanations which I, I'm not sure about are that is that somehow because we're killing off the grass in this area by covering it up this like the grass in like this little zone here instead of like all dying off like half of it or something is getting killed by the the stuff coming, the sediment going down on there, and um, is putting it, all its energy into the other half of the grass. Um, and so I'm not entirely sure about that. It could be a possibility. The other one is that because the sediment comes from our stream, which is a rather nutrient-rich stream because there's a farm runoff coming down from it, um, it has a lot of nutrients in it and that's getting but with the rain washed into the grass and because it's right next to you this grass is getting a huge nutrient burst. Um, so I'm not sure about either of those and so I'll set up some experiments to test them. An important thing to note is that while I put this down about a month ago, it's May 6, 2020, stuff I put down about a week ago isn't showing any of this so it looks like it takes a while for this effect to occur. And I'm not sure my test would necessarily show anything because it might be this only occurs right in the spring and I'm now like a month later than this test occurred, but I can't really do anything about that other than wait for next spring. And if nothing happens, you might be seeing this video next spring. So here in a secluded part of our yard that has been mown previously, I have a piece of cardboard with a stone on top of it to hold it down. I've got a bit of composted cow manure that we'll put on our garden normally as a kind of a different test. And then I've got some of the stream sediment here. Neither of these, I'm trying to make them thin enough that they won't block the grass growth. This might be a little bit too thick. I might spread it out more. Um, but this is supposed to block the grass growth. So I guess I'll have to just wait and see. It's May 23rd, 2020. and. I'm kind of finishing up these results because this lawn starts to need to get mowed and I'm just worried it's going to get too tall. And they're inconclusive is how I describe it. Um, this cardboard seems to have the most effect. There seems to be a, a slight increase around the edges of the cardboard. I'm not entirely sure it's there. And it also probably won't really show up on camera um, in these photos. There's also a maybe a slight increase where I put the thin layer of manure and I think I put too much of the gravel down and that mostly just killed the grass around it though maybe there's increases though there's also just a, like a random tuft of taller grass there so back on our driveway in the location where I did the first um, filming showing you and it's still present even in this two and a half weeks later um, there's this high area and then it goes to steps down a bit and then there's the lower area where that's been trampled. And a little bit further down in the driveway where I put it down more recently, it's showing but it's not showing as definitively as this area. Um, the results from like both these places observing here and the results from the little experiment indicate to me that it's probably because of the roots. Because
because this was done really early spring, whereas those were both done later spring. Um, and so this was done like before the grass was really starting to grow, so there's more energy in the roots of the grass at that point, whereas later the energy's already been put out into the stems. And so if there's more in the roots, it would be easier for it to redirect. I'm not entirely sure. So there's definitely more experimentation needed. Um, but it is cool to see that even the later it's showing it. So maybe it's multiple effects. I definitely need to do more experiments, I think, earlier to get a more definitive result. Given that the results showing definitive increase in grass in my experiments did not occur that first year, I did try again the next year. Though in 2021 I laid out the materials April 11th, not too long after I had placed them the prior year, I again saw no material produce taller grasses at its borders. The very early spring we had during 2021 meant that it had been a while since the snow had melted off the location I set up the plots. Different than the few days after the snow melted that I believe I placed down the soil, which I observed the increased grass growth on in 2020. The relatively short experimental period of 14 days in 2021 may have also contributed, similar to my experimental period of 16 days in 2020, considerably shorter than the estimated month from putting down the material to showing my first observation that spring. It's March 25th, 2022, and I'm at this experiment for the third spring trying to get some results from it. Um, this year, I think I have a better chance because it's only been less than a week since the snow melted off most areas. Um, and I chose areas that may took a little bit longer to melt off as well to try to get a better result because the last two, the two previous years had been several weeks just because of when I was around and when I first noticed it and then conducting an the experiment after that. So I've also got three experiment sites set up this year. Um, and at each of them, I have a cinder block to just block out the light without adding any fertilization, a very thick paddy of stream mud, and I homogenized all of this so it's kind of the same stuff, even though there's different sh shovelfuls going into it, it's the same stuff um, in this little paddy. And then one that I spread very thinly to hopefully allow grass to grow through it to see if that adds fertilization. I've got a thick paddy of manure, um, composted cow manure, um, we composted all last summer. It's the stuff we use in the garden. And then I've got a, th a thin little patty of that. So I've got this site here on our path. I've got that one over there on um, in the, the tall grass of the field, because I did potentially notice some tall grass effects in, in the field when I'd seen it before. And I've got one over on the other side of the house from here, over where I had the urine fertilization plots where I was doing the water on the, the short grass, the water and urine last summer. I have a little corner of that where I've got some plots. I also have um, this, this where I spread out some of this, the, the stream gravel soil, I don't gravel. Yeah, it's gravel, not much organics. These have a bit more organics in them, some sticks and stuff, whereas this is, I think, pretty inorganic, um, or, or at least on a macro scale, inorganic. Um, and this I spread right before the snowfall last November. Um, so I didn't spread it right now, but it can't have had any time to grow since then. So we'll see if that has an effect. And this is kind of the type of thing that I first noticed it on, but over more in this area. Um, now, two years ago. Though I set this up on March 25th, just a few days after the snow had melted from the area, it was not the beginning of a warm spring. In the following weeks, we had quite cold weather and several snowstorms. The photos on April 16th were taken just a short time after I observed the first grass growth, but that was not the end of our snow. It's now May 1st, a month and a week after I started this experiment this year. And the results or observations I'm seeing aren't as clear as I was hoping. It's quite possible that this unclear result is more typical than the, the very clear result I saw the first year, two years ago, spring of 2020, that I did this. And that might be why I'd never noticed it before that spring is because it's really not that distinct this year, even in like 
kind of the, the long linear area um, that I kind of was hoping I would see it because that's where I first observed it um, two years ago. But I, I do see some amount of grass. So this one, which was trying to imitate that, that long linear in, in my plot locations um, here in the driveway. And when I look at the other plots, I can see it I can see it as well, but not as clearly as I can see it in the driveway. So this plot here in the driveway, there's there's a little bit of a something coming up here, but it's not 100% clear um, that there is something there. Even though it's not as clear as that first year, I think this gives a good baseline that I can look at and say this is what it is this year and compare the other treatments I um, enforced and their result. Looking around, kind of just the blocking it out, it is, there really isn't anything. Like, I might be able to say that there's something in a couple places, but the grass just around here isn't entirely even. So I, I really, it's not my hypothesis that it's just blocking out. Moving on to the low treatment, I'm not seeing much. There might be a little bit in a couple of these places, but in general, there's really not much coming onto it. The more, the more interesting one is moving on to where I put the manure down as a much stronger fertilizer than whatever is like left over in this. And that, this heavy manure is where I'm seeing the most effect. It's, you've got the tallest grass compared to it and it's, it's coming up, but there's, there are patches where it clearly blocked out. Though it's not as completely blocked out as just the, the gravel, just by the nature of the manure not being as, like solid of a chunk that I can put it together with. And I'm also seeing where I put the light manure, there's certainly an increase in grass growth. While this would seem to suggest that the fertilization effect hypothesis that I had is correct, it's possible there's other effects to it as well. We had several snowstorms since when I started this experiment and some other periods of cold weather. So it's possible that this manure, which is very light and airy is actually acting as kind of an insulator which is increasing grass growth um, rather than just like the fertilization effect which could also could be a combination of those two. Realizing that placing gravel in the fall compared to the spring could have an effect, I placed a small patch of gravel extending what I put down in November. I did not see a substantial difference between the gravel placed in the spring and the gravel placed after the growing season in the fall. Under the cinder block, the grass appeared to be growing from where it was rooted to the edges, if it could. Though this could have also been how it got flattened when I put the cinder blocks down at the start of the experiment. If it was the case that it was growing towards the edges, this would discount my theory that it got killed off, and it certainly wasn't dead under the cinder block, that when it gets killed off, the energy gets redirected to the grass that can still grow. It may be that the grass does not have large enough root systems for the energy redirection to make sense, or it just may not occur. I may have stopped the experiment too early though. Two weeks after the wrap-up filming and one week of hot, sunny weather after the first mowing, the grass besides the gravel I put down for the path had grown up to be considerably taller and leggier than the surrounding grass. I ended up talking about this experiment with a neighbor last spring. Her hypothesis for the increased grass growth was that the darker gravel absorbed more heat from the sunlight and transferred that heat to the nearby grass, and given that early spring conditions might well be inhibited by cool temperatures, that caused the grass to increase its growth in that, those areas around the warmer gravel. A hypothesis around warmth fits with what I observed this spring that the best grass growth was by the dark, fluffy manure. The concrete block may have acted as a radiator, removing heat from the area faster. In 2020, I saw some possible increases around the cardboard I put down. The cardboard could have acted as an insulator and or absorbing more heat from the sun in a way the concrete block does not. My hypothesis for any future experiments going forward would be related to warmth the solar radiation collected, or the insulative properties of materials. Though the results of this experiment could be re explained by fertilization as a factor, and I've shown fast responses to fertilization before in my urine fertilization experiments,